It's like looking for a black cat in a dark room. But our guess is uh, somewhere in the range of seven to $27 trillion um, a year, and that's huge. My name is Porter McConnell, and I am the director of the Financial Transparency Coalition, a global network of nonprofits and governments and experts who all got together to crack down on illicit financial flows. The shadow financial system that exists out there, it's accessible if you have a certain level of money um, and it's not accessible to the rest of us and it allows you to hide assets in a way that helps you evade public scrutiny. Anything ranging from criminal acts like human trafficking and drugs to corrupt government officials pilfering state assets to multinational corporations just not paying their fair share. And so you see you know, potholes on the streets all because governments can't pay, but uh, the money's there. It's just in this shadow financial system. For instance, Africa, the continent, is actually a net creditor to the rest of the world. We're used to hearing, you know, oh, they're so poor, they don't have the money. Actually, the money is in this shadow financial system. There's plenty of money to go around, um, plenty of money to invest in schools and roads and all of the things that you need. It's just being siphoned out. So the U.S. is actually a huge contributor to the global problem. It has the reputation of being financially sound, having a sound economy, and the most, some of the most lax rules around. It is a very easy place to set up an anonymous shell company with very few questions asked. There are some things that the U.S. can do uh, to address the problem of illicit financial flows. One of the most basic steps is to put a name on these companies. Who is the real individual human person who is behind the company? And that's something that Europe has now committed to do. It's something that uh, in the UK and the Netherlands, they'll be doing public registries of this information. The US could do that and it would make a huge impact, not just in the US, again, because it's a receiving country of these flows, but around the world. What I'd like to see that I think could come from either, either side of the aisle is a desire to kind of fix the structural problems, the ability to kind of play by a different set of rules being one of them that I really think you could make the case for on the left or the right. So I'm, I think there's the potential, um, the case may look different on the Republican side in the sense that there's a real concern about the way that terrorists use um, the, the shadow financial system to engage in all sorts of things. On the Democratic side, it will be an issue of inequality, which has been uh, increasingly mentioned by the candidates. It's a great way to level the playing field so that the rules that we all follow um, are the same. So I think there's plenty to be had um, on either side of the aisle on this issue, and that's, I think that's the good news. Um, and hopefully the Panama Papers will help to make the case for some change, some much needed change. The rest of the world will be looking to see the U.S. play a leadership role, not just in capturing these funds, but in uh, enabling the ability of those funds to leave other countries. So I think that's, that's, that's a key role the U.S. can play. For anyone interested to learn more about illicit financial flows and understand how they work, the best resource for you is financialtransparency.org.